G'day you legends, we have just finished work and we are heading on a 40 minute walk to a place called the Sitting Ball. Basically it's a big, huge ass rock surrounded by other major rocks here in Arcarola. And we're going to photograph with a not very good landscape photography lens, which sounds super weird to say because we're going to do some landscape photography this afternoon. This lens is a must have and possibly a game changer for Fujifilm users in the prime field moving forward. I'm going to explain to you why on today's video because this lens is not a good landscape lens but just earned me a huge contract here in Arcarola and I want to explain to you why it could be a good lens for you. There's a bit of chill in the air so I'm going to get walking now, get to this sitting ball, a huge ass rock. Let's go. Alrighty, this is the big, huge ass rock surrounded by other rocks that are millions of years old. I have no idea why it's called a sitting ball. If anyone can see a sitting ball in that rock, please let me know in the comments below because these are definitely working and I cannot see it. Right now I'm on the eastern side of it. I want to get on the western side and photograph back this way. So I've got the sun over my shoulders looking into this backdrop that I'm looking at right now. It's bloody gorgeous to be out here. I'm getting hot, I get cold when I stand here. So I don't want to stand here too long. The sun is obviously setting quite quickly. Let's get going. So this is the beautiful viewpoint that I wanted to come to to use this incredible lens from Filtrox. You can see the background on my right hand side, the sitting ball, well, the sitting ball. On the left hand side, the Mawson Valley that I just walked down. This is absolutely gorgeous viewpoint. And once you get an you can come all the way out of this place and just enjoy this majesty by itself. Oh. Life's pretty tough out here, I must tell you that. So the composition is all set up, sort of. I'm gonna to touch on that in a little bit in a second. Shooting the X-T3 and the Viltrox 75mm f1.2. That is right, the brand new Viltrox Pro Series, a brand new series out by Viltrox, the 75mm low light beast f1.2. Now this is my first real landscape outing with this lens. I've already encountered a bit of an issue with the composition. At 75 mil, it doesn't work ideally. Now, I could walk backwards a little bit, but I wouldn't get the composition that I'm after. Hence, as landscape photographers, that zoom focal range is a little bit better. So why would a true landscape and travel photographer own this lens if it's not really working out? Well, for the last month, I've been doing a project for Arcarola, one of the best projects I've ever done in my entire life, basically photographing people in nature with low light photography, with a Milky Way, with this lens. This shot probably 50% of my images because that focal range is ideal for portrait photography. Landscape, not so much. But luckily for you guys, on the way out here, I was shooting some yellow-footed rock wallabies and went all through the entire aperture range from f1.2 all the way up to the lowest aperture. And I can luckily send you those for 100% free so you can see how razor sharp this bloody lens is from Viltrox. I really hope Viltrox do not stop making the entire series of this Pro lens because it 
looks so good right now. I know this is Australia, but I'm dressed the same as if I was in Iceland. The outback gets so cold so quickly. If you haven't experienced it, you don't know, but when you get here, the wind is bone chilling, probably just like Iceland. It's maybe 15, 10 degrees, but the wind makes it feel about four degrees right now. And tonight, it'll drop to probably zero degrees with that wind. It is just bitterly cold. But my question to you is now, Primes versus Zoom as landscape and travel photographers. Now travel is a little bit different, but landscape mainly. For me, it's not really in my arsenal. I wish I could, I wish I did, because they are a lot sharper and you get a lot better results out of them, me personally. But it's situations like this, when I'm having a problem on a landscape image with a tripod and a prime lens. I wanna shoot from the sitting ball on the left hand side with those rocks inclusive all the way to Griselda which is in the background of Arcarula. It doesn't fit with the focal range at 75 mil. If I was shooting probably 70 mil, it would be ideal. So what I'm gonna have to do is put two images together in a stitch pano, which is no problem for me. It's just sometimes it would be nice just to get it all in one image, but we have to stitch an image. It takes five minutes in post-production, if that, to capture that. So what I'm doing is putting it right in the middle, say my isolated one stick, I'm shooting f5.6 because I obviously have a 1.2 aperture from a max aperture, be pin sharp at that, putting it right in the middle of both of the framing and getting my shutter speed from there and it's reading out at one over 60. Because if I go left, it's a darker part of the composition, on the right, it's brighter because Griselda's still in. Obviously another five, 10, 15 minutes, we'll see. When the sun goes down, we get those pink colors in the background will change again and be more of a neutral color palette entirely. But my question to you is right now, primes versus zooms, what do you use and basically why? Okay, okay, lesson learned, do not be lazy. Whether you shoot prime lenses, zoom lenses for landscape photography, put time into the composition and it works. I was maybe 15, 20 meters away. Come up here with the X-T4 to get some footage for this segment and realize this works a hundred times better. Primes or zooms, it doesn't matter. Put time and energy in. At 75 mil, I get more of the sky. I get the sitting um, ball. I get Griselda. I lose a little bit of the building, which I didn't want of Arcarola, and I can shoot it in a single exposure. Primes versus zooms, it doesn't matter. There's one key element. Do not be lazy. This is so much better. Ah. Here is the image. I hope you enjoy my non-laziness.
Okay, the Viltrox Pro Series 75mm f1.2. It is an absolute beast of a lens. Low light photography is sharp. The autofocus is very quick, especially on the older X-T3 and X-T4. I'm sure on the X-T5 and X-H2, it'd be an absolute ripper. It is not my go-to for landscape photography. It wouldn't be the first lens I pack on a trip to Iceland. So why do I own it? Outside of landscape, outside of my passion of travel and photographing this beautiful world we live in, I need to get paid for my photography. That includes shooting people, shooting in low light, handheld photography, run and gun, capturing what is in front of me. I need low light lenses, sharp lenses, and lenses that are gonna get the job done. Unfortunately, lenses like the 10 to 24 mil are slow, very bad at autofocusing. The Tamron 17 to 70, it is pretty soft. It's not very good lens for that pin sharp images that clients that are paying five to 10 grand need. The Pro Series from Viltrox is a budget pro lens. It is so good. I really, really hope Viltrox continue this all the way through and make I don't know, a 23 mil, a 35 mil, it could be 1.4, that is fine, but their pro series that is better than their budget series because this lens is a huge step up. If you do Viltrox in the past, this is Viltrox on steroids. It is so much better. It's heavier, it's more expensive, it's better glass, it's bigger. It's in what you expect from a pro series lens. Let me know in the comments below, would you own a 75mm 1.2 from Viltrox in the Pro Series? You may have never heard of it, but now you have, I can guarantee you it is something that will not let you down. It may sit in the shelf for a while for me, but I know I can grab that lens and get a really good quality image out of it when a high paying client is out there. And that's exactly what has happened on this trip to Arcarola, shooting my campaign or project for Arcarola. I am so pleased with the images. Please make sure to drop below and download all these images for 100% free. There is no questions asked about that. And you make your mind up, come back to the comments and say, is it sharp enough for your necessity? Because for me, I focus right on the Yellowford Rockwell's eye and it is tack sharp. From 1.2 all the way to 5.6 F8, it is so bloody good. Now, I'm gonna keep enjoying this view cover my hands because it's getting freezing cold, hike back and get some tucker in my belly because I am bloody starving. And this is so good to be back out and photographing what this beautiful world of Arcarola brings us. Guys, I've loved having you along here. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this lens. There's one thing I can guarantee you. One thing I can guarantee you. We'll be back out photographing this beautiful place of Arcarola and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao. Bugger. Now it's cold. Ciao.